Hey, welcome back to episode four of my Raw Nationals prep series. This video is all of my training from week three of my prep. Got a little busy last week, so playing catch up right now with this video, but I hope this video is gonna be a really good one because I have a topic that I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, training has been going really well and it's beginning to pick up and some of my athletes are closing in on some of their meets. So today's topic is fairly relevant to myself and them as well. In this video, I'll be discussing fatigue 101, just going over all of the basics. So we'll go over today is what is fatigue, how to know if I, I am fatigued, and kind of just how to manage it. So first off, what is fatigue? I was taught in school to understand fatigue as an inhibition or decrease of performance that stems as a result from stress placed on the individual. I look at fatigue in two senses, acute fatigue and cumulative fatigue. Acute fatigue is fine, nothing really to worry about. It lets you know that you had a good training session and we don't really stress over it. What causes problems for most powerlifters is the cumulative fatigue. This fatigue comes from training in the gym, but external factors also influence fatigue, which we'll talk more about later. I'm not going to get crazy into the details of what yields fatigue, but it should be understood that partaking in a powerlifting program or competition prep, training through volume, varied intensities, and frequencies all induce cumulative fatigue. All the physical work that is being done along with energy expended and damage sustained by the body are all part of your pool of fatigue. Fatigue in powerlifting terms simply means that you can't squat as much, your joints are feeling kind of banged up, your deadlift is feeling slower than usual, and overall you're just kind of feeling like crap. Long story short, fatigue is bad, but it's completely necessary because training needs to present an overload to promote adaptations. So now that we have a basic understanding of what is fatigue, let's go over how to know if I am fatigued. Uh, having an understanding of what fatigue is is crucial. Uh, lots of powerlifters will say that they're really feeling fatigue, but have no real way of quantifying it. They've probably heard it once from someone on Instagram, and now they think they feel the same way too, when they're really just feeling acute fatigue or just general tiredness. Some of the ways I like to quantify fatigue include coordination when executing the big three, which probably also includes like proficiency and the skill of the movements in your squat, bench, and deadlift. Uh, bar velocity at usually comfortable weights, so if 315 on the squat usually moves fairly quickly and on one day it just doesn't and you're not executing well, that's a way of kind of quantifying it. How the bar weight feels versus how it usually feels at, at any given weight. Perception of regular effort for a given weight. Um, just general grip strength, your desire to go to the gym and train. Your mood, appetite, and sometimes just becoming sick is a good way to know whether or not you are fatigued. And also include general wear and tear injuries. To illustrate how I experience fatigue, uh, I usually begin really feeling it deeper into my more intense training cycles while volume is still very high. I've probably been building momentum week to week, steadily adding more weight on the bar, but the volume is still continuing to stay the same. I can quantify the fatigue because my warm-up weights are feeling heavier than usual, my technical efficiency is feeling off, and overall I'm just feeling less powerful, less skillful, and my body is beginning to feel more delicate. And honestly, I just don't feel motivated. So now that I sort of touched on what is fatigue and how I describe it, let's look on how to manage it. You first must understand that you can only really manage fatigue, you can't inherently reduce it. Cumulative fatigue is inevitable from hard training. It's going to happen. At the most basic level, you can manage training-induced fatigue through planned deloads, where you sort of just drop your overall work for typically one week. Uh, but I don't typically use this method. The second most basic way to manage fatigue is through well-timed rest days. Depending on your own programming or however your training days are built, use rest days to feel fresher for certain training days to follow. Uh, time these rest days to break up some of the harder training sessions. Don't go balls to the wall all the time back to back. Rest appropriately and be smart. Uh, there are plenty of techniques you can use to manage training induced fatigue, but those are the most basic in my opinion, and I could definitely go over more in the future. But as far as just managing uh, training induced fatigue, those are two very basic ways. Uh, you also have to remember that fatigue is cumulative and can be influenced not just by what you're doing in the gym, but also by your external factors. When I coach athletes, the first thing I do during the application process and the video conference is look into learning more about the athlete, looking into what their occupation is, whether they are a student, work a desk job, or say are, or or say have a laborious career. These are factors that greatly influence fatigue. I really 
also like to track and quantify other factors such as their quality of sleep along with the number of hours, their energy intake, and day-to-day body weight. Um, These are all things that need to be considered when looking at fatigue as a whole. I believe good habits develop long-term success, so if you have the attitude of actively managing fatigue early, you can control it later on. So in today's video, I quickly went over what fatigue is, fatigue indicators, and how to manage fatigue. This video was super basic and just sort of lays the foundational knowledge of fatigue. What you need to get from this is that fatigue is imminent and that fatigue management is important. Fatigue needs attention when designing and following a training program. And like with all things, personalization and attention to individual needs is important as well. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new from it, Be sure to show me some support by subscribing to the channel and leaving me a thumbs up. And feel free to chime in by commenting or asking a question in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll check in with you guys soon.